If you're new to Azure Data Factory and want to learn the basics, then this video is for you. Welcome to Azure Data Factory Back to Basics. I am Riz Ang, your Azure Assistant. Now, what is Azure Data Factory? It is a Microsoft product, part of Azure Cloud ecosystem that can help you to integrate many data sources such as SQL Database, SAP, and Salesforce into a single place. Usually, it's a data lake, and once it's in one single place, you can transform it and shape it to a different format and analyze it to meet your future data needs. To give you an understanding a bit more, let's start with an analogy. Say you order food online with home delivery. There is the restaurant, the food you order, your home, the driver, and the path where the driver goes through to deliver your food. Azure Data Factory works the same way. I'm going to take a copy activity as, a, as an example, which is very common. We have a data source, a table in this case, the destination, an integration runtime, which reflects the driver because it actually is actually a compute resource that brings data from source to destination, and a pipeline, which is the path. To actually perform a copy activity, you need a couple of things. First, you need a link service set up, which is effectively a connection information that details the source connection details and credentials like username and a password. You also need to set up a data set, which defines what data that you wanna bring from the source. Similarly, you also need a link service and a data set on the destination side. Now beyond copy, as your data factory you can do many other things as well. In today's demo, I'm going to show you how to copy a table from SQL Database to Azure Data Lake. But before we do, there are a couple of things you need to have. First, you need to have a Microsoft Azure account. Uh, please create one uh, if you're new from portal.azure.com. And also, you need to have an Azure subscription ready to create the next four resources in the list. And if you have all of them, well, let's get started. Welcome to Azure Portal. If you go to all resources, I have already created these four resources. On the top, I have a SQL server uh, created. When I was creating a SQL database, I created this one. And also I have a SQL database. And I have a data factory here. And also a storage account, which is set up as a data lake with hierarchical namespace enabled. First thing first, uh, please make sure you have uh, access enabled for the SQL server. So you can access it directly. And to do that, go to uh, click that resource and you go to firewalls and digital networks. And from here, please enable allow services, your services and resources to access the server. Make it yes. And make sure you also add your client, your IP into a list of client IP address here. I have already added mine. Uh, please create it, edit yours by clicking this one here. And when you have done this, similarly, you also want to allow access in Data Lake. So if you go to ADL1 storage account, you want to go to firewalls and virtual networks and please allow our access from all networks enabled. Now back to all resources. Uh, before, Because we want to copy data from SQL database to uh, Data Lake, uh, we do want to have a dummy table created in SQL database. And to do that, I click SQL Database and I go to Query Editor and I log in with SQL Server Authentication. There you go. I'm now in. I'm just going to create a simple table. Let's say Customer. And then ID, Integer, Name, Raja 100. And let's say City, Raja. Let me just try to run this. Yeah, successful. Let's create it. I'm just going to insert a few dummy records. Um, values one um, me one ct one. Just 
table, it should show you these two records that you just inserted. Back to all resources, uh, we can see that all resources we want are created now. But before we go to Azure Data Factory, uh, there is one more thing to do, and that is to set up a file system in Azure Data Lake. What you do is you go to Storage Account, ADL1, go to Storage Explorer Preview, and click Container here. There's nothing at the moment, and we right click and create a file system. Let's just call it raw. Okay, and that's it. You have now one new container or file system called raw, which we will dump a, the table from SQL database into. But I'll show you a bit more uh, what that looks like later. Now back to all resources, uh, we can now go to Azure Data Factory and click auto and monitor. Welcome to Azure Data Factory. Uh, this is the home page where you can get started. Going to the left menu, uh, you have the home page, the order where we and uh, you will spend most of your time if you're working with Data Factory. And in order, you see pipelines, uh, data sets, which is the definition of the data that you will uh, copy from or copy to data in copy activity scenario. There is data flows. Again, data flows is a, uh, a way to transform and wrangle data in data factory. I'll, I'll get to that in future videos. And there are connections, which again, will get you to ask to, you to go to Open Management Hub. I'll get to that. And also triggers. In data factory, once you've create, created a pipeline, you can run that pipeline manually, or you can trigger it on a schedule basis, like daily or weekly or hourly basis. And this is where you can create the trigger. The third one is monitor, where you can see dashboards of previously run pipeline uh, activities and triggers with a set time timeline and time zone as well. You can see pipeline that you ran, uh, all the trigger you ran, the integration runtime that was used. And Data Factory comes with uh, a default cloud-based integration runtime called Auto Resolve Integration Runtime which we'll be using for the demo. And there's also alerts and metrics. Now this is Manage, which is the Open Management Hub. Link Services is a uh, connection uh, detail of your data source. And we'll create some of them later. Um, there's Integration Runtime, which I covered earlier. There's Source Control, where you would like to store uh, your data factory codes and Typically, it's either GitHub or Azure DevOps, and you can set up the code repository from here or from Azure DevOps, and you, you can link them up. There's another one here called parameterization template. This is a feature where you can create a custom ARM template parameter, a JSON file uh, that can be used as an additional parameter file for your data factory. Next one is triggers. Uh, it's the same same screen as the one I saw we saw in Auto. And last one is the security uh, customer managed key. Now we want to create some link services. Go here, and create the first one for SQL database. You can name this one. Uh, I'll just leave it as blank and add description as well. Uh, by default, it will pick the auto resolve integration runtime. And you have option to uh, log in uh, with connection string uh, cap in data factory or you can get Azure Data Factory to connect to Azure Key Vault and retrieve that uh, credential. Uh, for, for simplicity, uh, I will use connection string, I'll go with my subscription, server that I've got, this database, and I'll stick with SQL authentication. You can also use manage identity or service principle uh, for authentication to SQL database. Test connection, yep, it's successful. Now you want to create another one for the data lake. Take the Gen2 data lake, because that's what we created before. Uh, just leave the name and description as is, same for that. And the authentication method, similar to SQL database, you can use the account key where it will connect to the issue data lake. 
also as principal M and its identity. Choose the subscription again and pick the storage account. Task connection. Create. Now that you have created these link services, you can go to author. Go to pipeline first. There's nothing at the moment. And you want to create two data sets. One for SQL database using the link service that we created. And in, in this case, I'm just going to pick directly customer table. You can leave this empty, but that's a separate video for later. There you go, you're done. And you want to create another data set for data lake storage gen 2. There are many data types that you can choose for this and I'll stick with the delimited text or CSV. Select the data lake storage link service and I'm going to go with the file service that I created previously. Raw. Now that it's created, you see that if the in this tab C, if you see there's a dot next to it, it means it's uh, it's uh, being used and it's not been published or saved. Meaning if you accidentally close this window, you will lose this. So first thing is you want to validate, which will uh, ask Data Factory to validate if there's any errors in, in your setup. And there's nothing, no errors here, so you can click publish and it will ask you to publish these data sets successful as is. Now, once we've created these data sets, we want to start creating a pipeline. Create a new pipeline. Now to copy data from, from these two data sources, you go to move and transform, copy data. Now from here, you want to choose source, SQL table, and go with table for now. You, ha you also have options to run a, a query, like a SQL query, where you can retrieve a certain columns from a certain table. Uh, this is more a dynamic approach. And you can also run a stop procedure that you created from this SQL database. Uh, we'll just stick with the basic table. And for the sync, you click the limited text dataset or what's pointing to the data lake. And just leave it uh, as is. From here, you want to validate again. Yeah, all good. And once you done that, you want to test run this copy. And you can see an output window shows up at the bottom here, which will tell you what the pipeline that is being run or queued first. And it should run very, very quickly. There you go. It succeeded. And you can also dissect what the input of this pipeline. Uh, this is all the information that can be useful for your review. And also the output of this. Uh, copy activity. You can see we have two rows read and two rows copy. And once you're happy with that, just publish, which will save this copy pipeline in the data factory. So when you return, you can always see them. And just to show you whether the data has been successfully copied, let's go back to storage account and go to containers. There you go. If you just click that one, there you go. This proves that this copy is successful. That's it for today's video. We learned about what Data Factory is and how it works with a simple example using Data Factory to copy table into Azure Data Lake. Press like if you like it and subscribe for more videos in the future. See you later.